All right, everybody, it looks like I've got 10 o'clock by, by my clock here. So we'll go ahead and get started. And oh, what happened to my PowerPoints here? Just one second. There we go. All right, so welcome everyone to There Is No Such Thing as Unmanaged Data. This is, uh, I'm Steve Olson. I am the manager of training services for Mesa. Um, some of you probably have met me before. I've probably met you uh, in different situations and going out and visiting customers and so on and so forth. So um, for those of you that have not met me, uh, again, my, my title here at Mesa is uh, manager of training services. Uh, I'm also part of our data management team, and um, I've got a couple different certifications that I've picked up along the way at my time here at Mesa. There's no real vault certification, so most of those things there are in Banner and Fusion and things like that. Uh, I have been at Mesa for 14 years now, and uh, pretty much as an instructor, data management guy from the very beginning, uh, I've picked up the role of manager of training services somewhere along the way. Uh, and uh, before that, I worked at a company called Fleetwood Folding Trailers. Uh, that uh, picture in the bottom right-hand corner is an example of what I worked on for five years using a variety of CAD systems. Uh, the last probably about two, two and a half years there, we used Inventor AutoCAD in the vault, so which is probably a lot of the, what you folks are using right now. Uh, another cool little fun fact about that picture in the bottom right-hand corner that's a picture of my wife and I from the 2004 product brochure. Back when I worked at Fleetwood, they used their employees in their product brochure. So that is from the 2004 product brochure when my wife, uh, when I worked there. So I do want to know a little bit about you guys um, in terms of what you guys are, are using right now for, for your data management. So uh, this webinar, I was trying to think of what to, to call this webinar. And it kind of hit me at one moment, like, you know, there is uh, no such thing as unmanaged data. You've got to be using something to manage your data. It just doesn't uh, kind of just manage itself. So that's kind of what I would like to know a little bit about you guys. Let me launch a poll here. What are you using to manage your data at this time? Um, is it stored just on a, on a network drive, out, out, um, out on a network somewhere? Um, are you using Vault Basic? Are you using Vault Professional or using something else? I know we have a couple customers that I think have wind chill. Uh, I've heard that term bounced around a couple times. Um, and I'm, I know there's other, you know, I'll call them third party, but there's other competing products out there um, that, uh, that you might be using. So I, I wanted to at least recognize that. So Give you guys another 20 seconds here to vote and then I'll display the polls, the poll results. All right, so I'm gonna close the poll and I'll display the results here. So about two thirds of you are just using Windows, which that's a fairly common situation. And we've got uh, some of you out there using Vault Professional. And so uh, this is uh, probably a good situation here for those of you that are using just Windows. This is a good way to learn uh, what Vault can do for you. For those of you using Vault Professional, this is a good reminder of what Vault can do for you. There's a lot of functionality that you may uh, uh, may not be using at this moment. So let's uh, let's dive into the material here. So let me kind of go through here. I already kind of asked the poll question, so we'll jump over that. Uh, so um, like I said, uh, all of your data, all of your engineering, your inventor files, AutoCAD files, it's gotta be managed in some way, shape or form. So, you know, about two thirds of you are using Windows to manage that. So, um, You've got files just sitting out on a network, a shared drive, probably a shared project and everything like that. Uh, Vault Basic and Vault Professional allow you to take that to the next level. A little bit more security. Uh, there's some additional functionality in terms of versioning, 
um, and security and things along those lines that we can can look into here. So uh, we typically recommend at least Vault Basic, and it's not just because we're trying to to you know get you to use more products. It's because it is actually got a lot of great functionality to help you. I've often said to customers, even if you're one guy in your garage, Vault Basic has some benefits to you. Uh, so let's just take a look at what what kind of maybe the shortcomings that using Windows might offer, or what that what what that does. So you're dealing with limited state search capabilities. I think normally when you're doing a Windows search, you've got file name, date modified, file size. Uh, it's just like there's like four or five different search criteria that you have. Um, there's no mechanism for you know managing file references. So I don't know if you guys have ever done this. If you've renamed a file and then you go to open up an assembly that uses that file, that assembly doesn't know that that file name was changed. So you get that file reference uh, or file resolution error that you've got to point to the new name. Um, things like that uh, happen when you are just using Windows. Um, there's no specific method to kind of help you know who's working on a file. Um, occasionally, and I, this doesn't seem to happen as much as of late, but I know it, it's sometimes I've heard customers complaining about, you know, me and so-and-so are working on the same file. Whoever saved it last, that's whose work got represented, and we end up losing some work. So that, that ends up uh, being a little bit of a problem uh, for you there. Uh, so realistically, it, it's just not designed to do what what, what you're going to need it to do. And the other thing, actually, that's uh, a common situation there with the file naming is a lot of you want to capture, you know, you only have the latest version of the file. You don't have anything to show that history. If you want to capture that history or if this has been revo revised to a new version, you got to rename it. And then we're back into that cycle of, oh, these files need to be repointed. Just Windows, you're probably feeling some pain there if, if you're doing, you know, a lot of this type uh, of all of these types of operations. So let's take a look at what Vault is and then what that gives you. So it's a server-based system, but you have a local workspace. So you're going to have files on the server, but you're going to be working locally. And when you do a check-in, check-out process, you, you kind of pull the file local, you work on it, you then push back into the server what you have as being the most recent version of that file. Uh, it is powered by a SQL database. So I was talking earlier or just a moment ago about the situation where uh, you have limited search capabilities. You only have those, you know, file name, fi uh, date revised, you know, those types of things. Every property that you have on your inventor file, inventor file can be moved into Vault and become part of that SQL database, which then gives you way more searching capability. Things like material, description. Um, stock number, you know, pretty much anything that you have in Inventor right now, any property that you use can become searchable when you're in the vault. Uh, user check-in, check-out process. So basically when I check a file out to me, no one else can be checking it out. However, you can still use the file. So if I'm working on a file and you want to use it in your assembly, not a problem. And actually you'll be alerted to the fact that I've updated or checked in what I've done, and you should then update your local version of that file. It does way better job of managing inventor references. Just a kind of a little thing that I learned after using Vault for probably about seven years was they actually designed the tool specifically for inventor. Now they found way uh, they found ways to utilize it with everything Autodesk makes. So almost everything you use Autodesk wise can be uh, connected in the Vault and used in Vault. But that's where its roots came from. It came from a data management system specifically designed for Inventor. So things when I do a rename, uh, the vault will be, uh, the vault knows all the references and it says, okay, well, this file has been renamed. It's been used in these five locations. I better tell these five assemblies that this file now has a new part number or a new file name or whatever. Uh, tools for find and reuse. So again, I can do searching to try to find the appropriate file. And then there is a copy design function inside of the vault that lets me take a completed design, maybe a drawing with an assembly and all the child components. I can say I need basically this, but a little bit different. So I can grab that drawing, grab that assembly, make copies of them, and then choose which files below them should be reused and which ones can be uh, need to be copied because they'll be different in the new version. 
So again, uh, like I just said, it was a little bit of a secret, but Vault was designed for Inventor, and that's why it's going to be probably your best bet when you're working uh, with this. So just a, a couple more, a couple other things here about it, and then I'll get into a couple of demos that I have planned for you. So again, it's a server-based application. The server is split into two halves, the database and the file store, and then it uses basically a web kind of protocol to communicate with the local uh, clients. And then you'll have a, a server application that you sits out there, and then you'll have um, your client machines will have a client on it that have add-ins for each of your CAD applications, and then you'll again do that local check-in, check-out. So here is an abbreviated version of the feature table. Uh, so obviously I don't, I don't want to throw up a, just a huge chart of all these different things and without a whole lot of description to what they are. So I try to condense it into maybe my, my top five in each case. So that's essentially what it ends up being. But you can see Vault Pro basically builds on Vault Basic. So everything that Vault Basic have, Vault Basic has, Vault Pro will have uh, a version of that. And in in some of our cases, some customers will start with Vault Basic, kind of get their feet wet, and then they'll progress into Vault Pro. Okay, some highlights here of these highlights: Direct CAD integration. So you will have an add-in in each of your applications, your CAD applications, that connect right into Vault. So if all you're going to do is open, edit, and check back in, you don't really have, ever really need the client, honestly. You can go jump right into Inventor, right into AutoCAD, open, edit, check back in, you're in good shape. The, uh, the, the enhanced property tracking, again, that's the SQL database where properties are mapped into the SQL database. A lot of the default I properties are there but we also can map custom properties that you might be using. Find and reuse, I kind of talked about the copy design already. Uh, concurrent design, what that means is I have the file checked out. You can still consume it. You can still use it in one of your, your uh, assemblies or you could be making the drawing while I'm working on the model. And then when I'm done, there'll be uh, there's, there's little status icons that let you know, oh, okay, he's, you know, he's got this file done. This has now been updated in the vault. I should get a new copy of it. File versioning, every single time I check the file into the vault, it becomes a new version and I have all that history to look back upon as that file um, goes through its, its paces. And there's a, a unique login for each user so you can see what date, what time, who did it. And whenever they check it back in, they have the ability to put comments on these. And that's actually something I used to do. I used to put the ECO number. Uh, I basically, all I did was ECOs. And so I'd put the ECO number in the comments. That way I could say, all right, you know, I'm looking for stuff related to this ECO. That's a searchable comment then. Uh, when Vault Pro, you get into the life cycles and folder security. So I can put additional security measures on that Vault Basic doesn't have. Vault Basic, if I can get into the Vault, I can see pretty much everything. Uh, Vault Professional lets me put on life cycles that let me determine who can see particular files based off of a state. So a state determines who can see it, who can modify it, who can download it, and who can delete it. Um, and then I also have the ability to put on folder level securities where I can pick out a specific folder and say who has read, modify, delete, and download possible capabilities from that folder. The job processor is an additional function allows me to do some things in the background that I don't have to do. Things like synchronizing properties, creating PDFs, creating DWFs, those types of things. It does have a change order process built into it. It does have the ability of doing items and bombs, which items and bombs, typically I, I, I kind of reserve those for folks that want to connect into an ERP because your ERP is basically item based. And so that's one of the, typically one of the prerequisites for going into or connecting your vault into an ERP system. Uh, but then we also have the ability of the web client and the vault mobile app. So uh, the web client is essentially a, uh, it turns your vault into a web page that's internal, uh, available on your internal network. Uh, but you can also do some things to open up to the outer network. Uh, basically it's a view, search and print uh, utility that you can have people outside of the engineer, you know, outside of the engineering group, um, you know, get into the vault, you know, ideally for your shop. That's a, a lot of common places where those people get looped in. Uh, and also the Vault mobile app. So it allows you to 
have on your phone or tablet some way to get into the vault and kind of, again, view, search, and print. You're not really going to be able to check out from either of these, uh, but you do have the ability to at least get in there, do some viewing, view some searching, or do some searching. All right, so let's get into some demos here of the basic functionality. So I'm going to do um, the a basic, uh, you know, check in, check out type uh, workflow here. So let me change the screen that I'm using here. Just one second here. All right, so I'm going to switch to showing you a different screen. Just one second here. All right, so let me jump to Inventor here. So Inventor, uh, I'm going to open up some files. Well, first off, I want to make sure I'm setting on the right project. And I realized here I probably don't have the right project. So I'm going to log into a vault here. So when you log into the vault, it's basically going to have a username, a password, a server, and then a specific vault you're going to log into. Uh, one thing about this uh, is that you also could use Windows authentication if you have Vault Professional. I'm going to log into this one here. And there is an Inventor project. Now I'm going to focus on Inventor because that's just the way, you know, that's just my go-to app. But again, this works with you know, lots of different, well, pretty much all the different flavors of AutoCAD um, and a lot of other different applications as well. But we're just going to focus on Inventor for right now. So I'm going to, this uh, project file, I want to make sure I have a local copy of it. So I'm just going to do this operation called Git, which gives me a local copy of that file. So now when I'm over here in Inventor, I can make sure that I'm pointing to that IPJ. So I'm going to go to my C. This underscore vault folder is my local workspace. So basically everything that I check out of vault is going to go here. Now then I'll be able to work on that. So I have an inventor IPJ file here. And let's just say I have a completed design that I want to check into the vault. So those of you that are using Windows, let's say, okay, I have this project or this design. I want to get it into vault. So I'm going to take the file from where it's sitting out on my network. I'm just going to do a copy. And then I'm going to jump back to my local workspace folder and just paste it right into there. So now here in Inventor, I can make sure that I am logged into Vault as well. So I want to make sure I'm logged in. Both, um, you know, all my CAD applications will need to be logged in. Uh, it's the same credentials. So really, you have your Vault client and all your CAD applications will want you'll want to check them in. I'm gonna go here to go to open, go to my clamp folder. I have a drawing of that, uh, that assembly. So I'm gonna open that up. I'm taking sweet old time. It's the first thing I've opened up today. So that always takes a few extra seconds here. So here's my drawing. If I look here in my browser, I have actually added a vault tab. And I like to do this because it gives me an eyes into seeing what vault sees. And you can see here, there's all these different status icons next to each of these files. And basically it just means that none of these files have ever been in the vault yet. So they would be new to vault. So I'm gonna right click on this. I'm gonna say check in. It's going to show me what file it's going to be checking in. Because I'm checking in the drawing, it's going to take in all the children, which is ideal. Now, one thing that it isn't showing here is that this grip has a drawing. And maybe I want to add that too because it's a related file. So I'm going to hit on this icon here that will allow me to include the grip. So it just basically said, okay, that grip has a drawing. I'm going to grab that one too. It's an optional check-in, so I don't necessarily have to include it. I could turn it off, but I do intend to bring that in. Uh, so I'm going to add this to the vault. I can add a comment. So I'll say initial check-in. Say OK. And it's going to take off. It's going to check those files into the vault for me. So you can see now these all have an icon that lets me know that they are checked into the vault. 
Before I go into the vault, I actually wanted to show you here the workflow of what it would look like if I want to make a modification. So I'm going to grab this, this component here. I'm going to open it up. This part here I want to open, so I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to make just a small change to it. I usually put like a little slot right in here somewhere. So I'm going to create a sketch. And you can see here Vault saying, hey, uh, you don't have that checked out right now. Do you want to check it out? So yes, I do. So the, uh, I like to always point out how Vault kind of watches your back for you. It's showing you that, uh, that hey, you don't have it checked out. Do you want to check it out here? Here it's asking about making sure the properties are synchronized. So I'll say yes to that. And I'll just use just a little slot here. Size-wise, I'm not going to care too much about. I'm just going to draw something here super quick. And uh, normally I would dimension it, but we'll just leave it like that for right now because you're not worried about Inventor. You're worried about how Vault works. So I'm going to add a cutout here. I'm going to say through all. So I've added my little slot there. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to close this file out. It's going to ask if I want to check it in. I like to do all my check-in at the very end with everything together. So I'm going to say no to this. It's going to come back here. I'm going to do my update. It's going to say, wait a second, you don't have this checked out. Do you want to check it out? Sure, I'll check it out. It's going to want to synchronize the properties. That's fine. That looks good. I'll save it. I'll close it. And do I want to check it in? No. And again, I could check it in. It's just this is kind of like the habit I have developed over the years. Now I'm back to the drawing saying, hey, the drawing's not checked out. Do you want to check it out? Yes, I do, because I want to make sure that these changes are represented here. So I'll say yes. I'm going to update the properties. So you can see now I've got this. I'm going to give it one quick save here. If we do, do a quick little look over here at the browser, you can see I've got the drawing checked out. I've got the, the assembly checked out and this upper plate checked out. All these other files have a status that lets me know I could check them out if I wanted to. Also, the green dot lets me know that the file I have locally is newer than what Vault has, and that should make sense. If I saw something that was red here, it'd mean that I'm behind, or my local copy is behind what Vault sees, and I should get a local, uh, or update my local copy. I'm gonna right click on this, I'm gonna say check in. So you're going to see here it's going to have those three files that I've just checked in. So let me come down here and say, uh, I'm going to say added slot to upper plate. Say OK to that. It's going to churn through. It's going to check those all in. Everything's nice and clean. Now let me jump over to my vault to show you what we have. So I'm going to do a quick refresh here. Vault doesn't automatically refresh its display. I have to do that automatically. And the reason that it, it doesn't do it automatically is the fact that if you think about it, if I've got a if I'm in a situation where I've got a hundred users, it could constantly be refreshing based off of you know other people checking things in or not. So it kind of relies on me to do that active update or, or refresh. All right. So if I go to my inventor essentials folder, scroll to the top here. That was a clamp folder that I copied to my local workspace. So now I have a clamp folder. And all those files were in that folder. So you can see I have them all here. If I click on my drawing and I go to the history tab here, you can see that I and that added it to Vault about 1019. I checked it back into Vault with the, the new changes at 1020 or 1022. I'm logged in as the administrator. So that's who changed those in each case. If I go to the Uses tab, I can see that this drawing uses this assembly. This assembly uses these components. So it basically it's, it's showing me all the references. So it's not a true bombware uses uh, or, or uses, but it is ref showing me all the references. So it's more of a it's, so it's kind of almost like a CAD bomb at that point, but not 100% showing every part because it's just the file references. Uh, if I switch over to the assembly and do the where used, I would see the inverse of that. I can see there's the drawing that is using that. The change order one is if this is, if I'm in Vault Pro, if there's change orders associated to this component, I'd see those listed here. The last one is the view. So you can see that there's two different versions of this one. So I can kind of pick which one I want to look at. I'll say I'll look at the new one. 
and give it a second here to think about it. And there I can take a look at this file. If it was a drawing, I could do that too. There's also a drop down up here in the upper left hand corner of this pane that lets me say, oh, I want to look at the original version. So I can kind of compare the two side by side, or at least kind of take a look. Okay, I can see definitely that slot has been added for version two. Uh, the history would show me that that was part of the comments, all those things related to that. All right. So the next thing I wanted to show you was some of the searching capabilities and also that reuse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to my top level folder here in the vault and I'm just going to do some different searching. So this little search bar here is a fairly robust um, search. It's called the basic search. All of the properties have a definition to them, and one of the, the definitions is, is it included in the basic search? So right now, if I type in the word clamp, if I could type properly, that would help. So you can see I'm getting folders. There's some different files here. You know, Some of them are like, well, why is this one included? Well, something in its either its description or some other element here has the word clamp in it that it picked up. Uh, uh, you can see here there's some file names here as well. These components here are related to it or, or something like that. If I go back up here and search for, say, steel, comma, mild, it's going to find things that are made out of steel that, uh, that are in the vault. So you can see here this one has steel, comma, mild as its material. So that's a fairly robust search. Sometimes you get way too much information to that. And you're like, There's, I'm getting too much. I can't find what I'm looking for. So this little arrowhead right here expands out what they call the query builder. So I could find search just where file name is the word clamp. And you can see there's the things that are just clamp. I could come down here, uh, you know, grab one of these other things here. This is material already. I could swap it out for a different property. Uh, by default there, I think it's author. Uh, but uh, I search for, for material more often than author. So here I'll say steel mild. And there we go. And actually, I could even do steel. Steel star or asterisk as a wild card, and it would find uh, some different ones and anything that has steel in the name of it there. So I can find a bunch of different types of components. The other type of search I have is this find up here where I can build a specific criteria. Like I could say, well, I want to find where maybe material is steel mild. But where the description has the word plate in it. So I'll find description contains, and I could do like a star, plate, star, add that. And now if I do a find now, I should find just one component. And if I click on this, I can say go to its folder, go to that file. And you can see here that it's still mild and its description is just the word plate and it's a, it's a bent plate that if that was what I was looking for I could do some sort of copy on that and kind of go on so let me show you how I would do a copy I'm not going to do it on this one I'm going to go to a different one and um, this one here is the the kind of my go-to one for copy design so if I kind of open here really quickly a view of this so this is a lifter mechanism that has three arms to it and we want to make one that has four. So what I need to create copies of in this case is the drawing, the assembly, and then the sleeve component here and this arm component here, those both, the new, both need to be copied as well in the final design because we need to add a fourth occurrence to each of those. Uh, they're basically patterns in those components. So what I could do is I could find my drawing, right click on it and say copy design, now I will say here, copy design between Vault Professional and Vault Basic is laid out differently. 
the underlying function is identical. It's just they, re they redesigned the interface for Vault Pro. I'm not sure exactly what the, the purpose behind that was, but it is, uh, it is uh, it was redesigned by Autodesk. So here, I'm gonna pick out the components that I was talking about. I wanna get this one here, the, the, the drawing, the assembly, and these two components. And I wanna put them in their own folder. So I'm gonna right click on here and say, copy to. And it'll let me create a new folder called Spider. Oops, spot it wrong. Spider Lifter Forearm. Say OK to that. Say OK. So now over here on the right hand side, I have the ability that's got laid out. It's got a prefix here and it's got the base name. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these rows and say set value of prefix. I don't want a prefix. So I'm basically going through and getting rid of the prefix. And then here I could do one of two things. One is I can find like the, the threes and remake them as four, or I can do a find replace. And I wanna find stuff in the numbering panel, which is this thing over here. I wanna find threes and replace them with fours. So I'm gonna say find next. Replace, replace that one. Actually, that one's already placed. Find next. Find next. So I could do it. In some cases, it feels like it might be easier to do it manual. Sometimes it's way easier, especially if you have like a project number that you want to like find and replace in all of them. Uh, that's, that's a fairly simple thing to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and say close to that. And now I'm going to say execute copy. It's going to carry out the copy and I'm going to close this dialog so you can see now I have a spider lifter forearm folder and it has the four new components if I pick on say this assembly here and say uses let me drag this up you can see that I've got the sleeve uh, and the spider that the new ones there are used in that uh, if I go to say uh, the other folder and pick out one of these, say the crank, and I say where used, the crank will show me it's used in both assemblies. So, um, so there we have that. All right, so the next thing I like to show you or talk about is the life cycles. So I talked earlier when I was kind of introducing all of this that a life cycle basically depicts or, or controls who can read modify, delete, and download a specific file when it's in a given state. So basically how this works is you put things into a specific category that assigns a lifecycle state and a revision scheme, and then uh, that adds a little bit of different uh, level of control to this. And I want you to see, uh, I'll do this here for you real quick so you can see that. One other element here that I'll talk about as well is the job processor. So the job processor, I can set up to do specific tasks when it sees a file transition between states. So what I'm about to do here is I'm gonna put files into a release state. I'll kind of show you how that adds that extra layer of security when I'm working on the file, how to manage that. And then when I'm done, uh, I'm gonna push something from a work in progress state to a release state. That's gonna trigger the job processor to create some different synchronized properties. It's going to create or, or update a DWF and also create a PDF for us. So I'm gonna go back to the clamp that I've been using. I'm going to grab the drawing. I'm gonna say change category. I'm gonna tell it to grab all of the dependents. So you can see here, it's got all of the dependents there. I want to move it into an engineering category. The engineering category has a specific lifecycle scheme and revision scheme associated with it. So I'll say, OK. So now you can see I've got um, this work in progress state. They're all revision A. One other thing here that you may or may not have noticed is all these compliance equivalency. I created a mapping for properties, and this state now doesn't match the file that's supposed to. If I hover here, there's a user status I property that I said should match this and it doesn't see that as matching. So what I need to do is I need to do a quick control A to grab all of these. 
And then under actions, I can synchronize my properties and it'll make that compliancy go away because it does see that they are matched now. So all that's doing is taking that, reaching into the CAD file and pushing that value. So now the software will see that they have a matching state. We'll just give that a second to churn through. Usually it goes a little bit quicker than that. All right, so I get a little report here showing me that it updated the properties and all of those. I'm also going to change the state of all of these. I'm going to push them into a release state just to kind of show you what that looks like here. So if I go to release state, say OK, these are all now in a release state. They're all locked that I'm not really going to be able to modify them. So you're not really going to see that here. I'm going to jump over into Inventor and do that. So I'm going to close this file out. The file has been modified and that's what this status icon here means that I don't have even the right revision because uh, this was a non-revision or a null revision now it's on an A so it's even seeing that I don't have the right one but it's probably a good idea to go to the vault tab here go to open and I can do an open from vault so if I know I don't have the most recent version or even any version on my local system I can reach right into vault and open from there. So I'm gonna to go to the same drawing. Basically what I'll do is I'll remove that slot that we have on there. So I'm gonna say open to that. And it's saying it's locked. Do you wanna to, to get, uh, do you wanna continue editing? No, I don't. It's locked because it's in a release state. I'm gonna say no to all because it was upset about all, all those files would probably trigger a message. So if I look at Vault now, you can see I have a little lock icon. It's because these files are at a release state. Since I want to make that change, I need to move the drawing, the assembly, and that plate to a state where I can then uh, check it out. So I have to go to grab these. I'll right click. I'll go to change state. I'm going to push it to work in progress because I know that the work in progress is a state that I can then check it out. So I'll say, OK, now these become bubbles that I can check out and I'll do what I did before where I go to open this one up. I'll open this part. I'll delete this extrusion out of here. It's asking, do I want to check it out? Yes, I do. I'll update my properties. I'll save and close it. I don't want to check it in. Like I said, that's, it's, that's just kind of my personal habit. Uh, yes, I want to check it out. Yes, I want to update properties. Save and close. No check to the check-in. And I'll check this one out here. Check the drawing out so I can make sure everything looks updated update and synchronize properties. Now, one thing I'll show you here uh, before I check it in is I mapped the this one field here to show the status. So uh, what I'm going to show you here in a moment, that's going to say work in progress, but the job processor will update the properties and redo the, the, the viewable. So when I get into vault, I'll see that that will say released. So let me check these back in here. It wants to save on that. That's fine. I, I can even say removed slot from upper plate. So it's all checked in. I'm going to grab these files again and then push them back to a release date. That way we know they're all in good shape there. So now that I've got that, if I kind of jump back over to Vault here, do a quick refresh, the job processor may or may not have kicked in. The job processor wakes up every 10 minutes and then decides if it see if it sees any tasks that it needs. Oh, it's already running for me. So I just need to, to pop it open here. Just bear with me here a second. So it's idle, Let's see here. Yesterday when I practiced this, it, it was already running and it kind of just grabbed the, the task for me automatically here. Uh, I'm in that 10 minute window where it hasn't woken up yet. 
So you can see there's a bunch of different tasks here. I'll say pause, resume, which, I'll, which basically just wakes it up. And you'll see it's going to start carrying out these tasks. It's creating DWFs. Uh, there's some properties it's going to synchronize for me. And I'm also going to get um, some uh, a couple PDFs here as well. Now, I will also get a couple tasks that will error because it's, it was trying to synchronize properties on something, but it's already versioned up. So it's going to error on me. So I'll just remove that one. It doesn't need to. There's there's about three here that will error in the grand scheme of things because they're trying to update old versions, which it's not allowed to do, which is fine. It, it kind of makes sense that it shouldn't do that. So, yep, there's the, the other two that erred. I'll just remove those. And they're all done. So I'll close that, do a refresh here. So now you can see I've got a PDF of that. All of these here are in compliance. These symbols here just mean that I don't have the most recent uh, version. And, and the synchronizing properties probably pushed up a version is probably what ended up happening here. But if I go to this drawing and go to my view, like I showed you before, when I before I checked it in, it was saying work in progress. You can see now it says released. And the same thing holds true with the PDF. There we go, there's the release. All right. Let me check my notes, make sure I, the next thing I want to show you guys. All right, so the next thing I was gonna show you was the ECO process. So what I can do here is I'll grab a specific file. So let me go here and I'll grab a specific the SVI guide here, it's drawing and it's part. I'll grab both of these. I'm gonna right click and I can say add to change order. So I can say to new or existing, I'll say new. And it has an automatic naming system here that it can use for the ECO. So it's gonna automatically create an ECO here and I'll just say change slot size in base. And I could add some sort of description there. We can add additional properties to this. Uh, if I go to the records tab, you'll see that those two components are, are shown. I can add additional comments if necessary. The files tab would show what files are available there, or connected there. Vault Pro also allows you to do uh, markups and save them inside of the vault. And I can attach those to it if I had a markup for that. The, the routing here, basically has specific roles that people will play. Uh, right now, the admin is one of only a couple users in this vault. So the admin role that I'm logged in right now is every every role or every position on the routing. So it's gonna look like not a whole lot's happening here, but this is obviously something you could set up that somebody's to change requester, somebody's to change administrator, uh, the responsible engineer there, is uh, someone that is designated to carry out the work when it gets to a specific stage. Uh, if I look at the status tab, you can see here's kind of the workflow that it has. It has an open, it has a work, review approved, there's rejected and canceled and closed and things like that. I'm gonna go ahead and just save this one here real quick. I'm not gonna carry out all of the, the operations, but I will show you how, the, how the, this interface works. So I do have a change order list up here. So it will show me this change order. I can look at all the different tabs right here in the preview. I could right click on this and say edit. It open that back up. I could go to the status tab here and see it's still in the create phase. I'm gonna go to the actions and say submit. I could add additional comments. There's also the ability to set up email notifications. Uh, one of the roles is email notification user and I could type up something here, or add some notes to this email that everybody would get. Now it's in an open phase. 
So again, I could go into edit um, or I could just right click here and say respond. I'm gonna say submit. Same thing, every time you do that, you get the comment slash email dialog box. Now, one other thing I'll show you here is this work list over here. So whenever it's to the ECO is to a specific phase that you are connected with or you're the routing person for, it's gonna show up here in the work list that you can click on there and it'll take you to that. So just to show you here, if I go to a different file, click on this ECO, it takes me right to the ECO in that interface. Yeah, at this point being at the work phase, I would look at what files need to be changed, go to those files, check them out, make my changes. I'm just gonna skip that step because you've already seen how that process works. I'm just going to respond, submit it. I'm just gonna carry this all the way out through the end, kind of just respond, approve, I guess the approval phase, and then I can respond and just close it out. So that's kind of how the ECOs work there. Let's take a look at how items work and how the bombs would work with them. So I'm gonna to go to a different uh, CAD file here. I'm gonna to go to, say, this drawing here. Actually, it works better if you go to an assembly because it grabs the components associated with it. So I'm gonna grab this, uh, this assembly, right click, and I'm gonna say, assign update item. So I'm gonna say assign item. It's going to gather some data. So here, basically, it's just got some, some generalized properties here for the item. The history, there's no history to the item. The bill material would show me here everything. It created components or items for all the components that went into that. Uh, if I need to add, an ex uh, a new or existing item, I can say add new item, and it would say what kind of uh, what kind of component is this, and I'll say it's just a part. Say okay, you know, add it to the bill of material, and then I can go back and configure that one here in a little bit later. Um, where use change orders in case those things are associated with that. The view will let me see the two files associated with it. You can see I've got the um, the assembly and the drawing. Uh, there is a primary associated file and a secondary associated file here. Because I grabbed the assembly, that's the primary associated file. I could change it to something else if necessary. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And it's going to become an item here. So if I go here to my item master, you'll see that I have all these different items that are associated with that. And again, this would be what I could then connect into like say an ERP system. All right, one last bit of functionality to share with you is the, the web client. So let me jump over to a web browser. So I'm gonna bring my Chrome onto the screen. I'm gonna click on this little uh, bookmark I have. Uh, it's going to say uh, my session expired. I got to log in. So it's going to take you to a page like this. Note that the uh, address here is basically my server name, thin client, and then basically it has some information here about which vault I'm logging into. I'm going to use my admin account. And I'm going to sign in. So you can see I'm going to have three different sections here. I'm going to have my files my items and my change orders. For my files, if I kind of go into this Inventor Essentials, there's this clamp folder that we were working with. Uh, I could look at the drawing. You can see here's all the different properties associated with it. Uh, there are user-defined and system-defined properties. Uh, that's, they're, they're segregated out. System-defined properties are things that the software uh, vault maintains and you can't edit user defined are things that I have full control over and most user defined ones are mapped to something that's specific to inventor like an inventor I property. We can see the history of this file, how it started out with nothing and then became revision A uh, and then actually the job processor here synchronized the properties and that's why there's a, the, uh, basically a version up. The uses, I can see, contract the, uh, the uses, you can see there's the PDF attached to the drawing 
the where used. That one doesn't have a where used. There's not an item associated to this one, but if, if that was the case, again, change orders. Just to show you that, if I go here to where my feed guide was, that is associated with a change order. And you can see there, there's that. I can go to the view, and I can take a look at uh, the file here. So it's going to load the viewable. And there's the drawing for that one. So I said about items, uh, you can restrict the the web client if you want people to see things that are released or just in a work in progress. Uh, or basically, it's do you want them to see only released or do you allow them to see anything else? So my items are set so they only can see released items and those things were not in a release state because that lifecycle system also um, can impact items as well. Change orders here is that the, that change order I worked through. Um, so this is ideal for folks that uh, again, you know, the shop floor, maybe sales, purchasing that they need to see what's in the vault, but you know, you don't necessarily need to 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 get a full license for them. So how vault basic licensing works, it's essentially part of the product design and manufacturing collection. So you pretty much already own it if you have uh, the product design and manufacturing collection. Vault Professional, there's additional functionality, so there is uh, a seat cost for that, but the web client is a way to get people into it without having to buy them a seat. So uh, again, all they can do is view, search, and print, so it's good for people that are just gonna need to, to print out drawings or, or browse around and take a look at things here. Again, I didn't do any kind of searching, but I could search for, say, Clamp, and I'll get all my searches. So this is essentially that basic search like I showed you inside of inside of the Vault client. Uh, and then there, again, there is a, a, a mobile app that uh, I'm not really able to show you that because it's a mobile uh, thing, but uh, you can connect up to the server and have similar functionality on your phone uh, without having to, to go through um, through all that. All right, so let me, that's all the demo stuff. I have just a few things to wrap up here, so just bear with me here a second while I switch my monitor around here. So got through all those things there. There's a few slides that just for notes for me, but, um, one last poll here, just kind of get a, kind of a feeling for what you guys feel about Vault now that I, you've seen it. So let me kind of throw one more poll up here. I'll launch it just to, you know, do you feel like Vault is maybe got some 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 benefit to you there? Do you think you're maybe if you're still using Windows, you're like, ah, there wasn't anything there that I really thought was great. Uh, do you think, hey, uh, you know, I've, I've, I want to move into maybe basic or move into pro. Um, my one monitor just went off there. Okay. Give you guys another 30 seconds to, to share your responses. And then, uh, uh if you guys have any questions, now would be a good time to type those into the chat. I'd be more than happy to take whatever questions you guys might have. If you think of something later on, uh, by all means, feel free to reach out. I'm going to close the poll and I'll share the response. So it looks like uh, a fair amount of you uh, might be interested in some Vault Pro. Um, some of you might be looking into moving to Vault Basic. And that's a, a, a moving from Windows into Vault Basic is uh, is a uh, fairly common thing. And then after a while, if you feel like you want to move to Pro, that's all, all, all often, uh, again, what we end up seeing customers do. But uh, some customers just opt right for Pro because there's something in there that they want to see. Uh, can you embed Excel or Word documents into Vault? So um, actually, Vault can handle any and all file types. And actually, Excel and Word can be, there's actually add-ins right inside of them that you can check things in and out, just like a CAD file into Vault. So um, I'm hoping that's what you were asking for. Um, 
If not, feel free to uh, ask a follow-up. But but Vault can take anything. It's it's not just specific CAD. I can put pictures in there. I can put PDFs. I can put Excel documents, Word documents. We have a few customers that are that uh, move to it for all of their document management. Um, you um, for that that's more of a Vault Pro thing because of the the you know for licensing. I actually remember a few years ago doing a Vault Pro implementation and, and users were checking in access databases too. So um, a lot of different possibilities. Uh, again, anything that's an Office product, Microsoft Office, there will be an ad in it just like the, the CAD applications, but there's also workflows again for like pictures and things like that. Uh, if we implemented it for you, we could show you what how that works. It's just a little bit of a different uh, workflow. Any other questions? All right, I do wanna thank all of you for attending today. Um, attending, there is no such thing as unmanaged data. So hopefully uh, you recognize that there is some sort of mechanism to how you're managing your data as it is right now, whether that be Windows, Vault Basic, Vault Pro, um, and if you if you're interested in any of these things, feel free to reach out to us. We can definitely come out and do a little bit more in-depth demo. I didn't get a chance to show you moving or moving files, renaming files, uh, some different uh, things along those lines. All right. Well, thank you guys so very much. If you have any any questions come to you come to mind after we get off today, feel free to reach out to us uh, whether uh, our support line, which is support at Mesa dash cad.com or your salesman or even just call the office and talk ask to talk to me or, or one of the other uh, tech reps uh, would be would be a good idea so all right thank you guys very much for joining me today and i hope to talk to you real soon